once somebody has invested the time and the energy of uncovering a nugget, we don't want to lose it because more than likely it'll be reusable. All right, let's take a look very quickly at some of the, uh, the technologies. Face-to-face -face training, distance, uh, whether it be audio or video. Earlier it was audio, then it became video, more video anyway. And video conferencing, point to point. This is using expensive uh, video equipment and usually dedicated lines. Video over the internet. Internet. We've all been familiar with. Um, can't even think of the name of it now. Skype. Uh, that's an example of that. PowerPoint and audio uh, over the internet. Webcasting, webinars. Those are the kinds of things that we're able to do now. Uh, they're readily available to us, and they're quite a breakthrough. We're going to hear a little bit more about them this morning. And then there's all kinds of variations of podcasts. And uh, what else did I throw up here? I'm sorry, down here. PowerPoint and videos over the internet. So this is adding video to the mix of just audio, which is a step up. Another thing is multi-point to multi-point video, uh, which I'm, not even, I'm just saying, I'm just putting it up there right now. I'm going to talk a little bit about it later. Uh, what else is the next? Okay, now I'm back here to the time phrase zero again. Computer-based training, which started back in the 60s and 70s, mostly text, minimal amount of graphic. Passive linear video, most of you recognize what that is. Uh, and PowerPoint was a powerful tool, which now is used for a lot of training. Uh, but in order to make it into a self-paced, um, interactive training, it has to be uh, some kind of an authoring system that allows you to put some of this stuff together. Uh, learning management systems have evolved and been around for a while. Um, some people call e-learning a product that is really should be called e-reading. So it's not that you can't learn something from this, but too many people today are just putting piles of stuff out there and saying, this is your course, read these 25 page documents and it's just page turn. We, we know that phrase. So that while it still has some place, it's not what we'd really like it to be. Self-paced, where text and graphics are part of, and then interactive video, where it's not just text and graphics, but we've actually embedded video into the content. And then, um, let's see, along here with podcasts is mobile learning, and there was another one out here too, I think, uh, iPods. And then learning content management systems, which is, if this is learning management system that manages the catalog of courses, this is one that can actually go in and pick pieces of, and we get to um, designing courses much more nuggetized or smaller, modularized, than a learning content management system could actually create something for a person by pulling various pieces together instead of providing them entire courses uh, as if the whole thing was designed by an instructor. Uh, out on the fringe, one of the topics for this morning is simulations, sometimes called gaming. I don't know, I think that cheapens it, but that's, the, that's what it's also oftentimes called. But business simulations, and uh, James will be talking about this morning. He'll give you some better terms for that, I'll show you some examples. Coming up this last um, sector here, which is focusing on more learner led stuff uh, libraries, procedure manuals, and repositories, what James talked about in terms of portals, but typically of the document nature. And then we get out of the documents and we talk about some of the other things that go on in knowledge management, the connect part of knowledge management, where you have team rooms and communities of practice working. And uh, things like instant messaging, of course, are important. And RSS feeds are ways to get knowledge to people, little knowledge nuggets. And performance support, another topic. In fact, that should have been a little bit further out on the, uh, on the fringe there of that uh, sector. Though performance support has been around the first time I think I heard of it was 1995, but not too many people did much with it until much more recently. So that's what I consider a very important topic. And then we're going to talk about knowledge bases and learning agents. And George, this morning, will give us a quick view of what learning agents are, formerly called expert systems. So some of you are familiar with expert systems, you'll understand by the end of this morning what the latest generation of those are. So here's uh, this map once again, but we're not going to point out the things we're going to cover. Here's simulations and PowerPoint audio and intellect, uh, over the internet, we call webcasting, learning agents out in this sector, performance support here, knowledge bases up there, and I think, uh, and then one more, or, or do one more pop up. Interactive video, I'll talk a little bit about that in multiple <coughs> video. Sorry to do this so quickly, uh, but in the second session this morning, uh, when I'm back up to give you my talk, we could go back and poke at it a few more times. So if you formulate your questions about this, we'll address those later this morning. Here's some end game technologies. I'll, do, I'll let you just scroll down across them yourself. You can do it. Take it <laughs> shut up. You can read fast and I can talk and I'll just shut up. Okay, where are you on the technology map? I love this expression from Peter Drucker. If you think learning's expensive, try ignorance. 
Are you still doing web face to face or do you do webinars? Do you do just in case training or are you uh, just in time learning? Are you focusing on performance support and just for you learning or not? Do you do have a document repository or are you focusing more and more on knowledge bases and learning agents? Do you continue to do computer based training which is just text and graphics or are you moving into interactive video and simulations? Let's sort through the hype and understand learning in the knowledge age. And today we have for us this morning, let's see, what, what was that last little budget? I didn't see that. Create a learning organization. Now, for all of you that are trainers, learning professionals, um, you should be enamored with knowledge management. But my experience is, many of you have thought for many years, and rightfully so back in the late 1990s, that you did training, and now we call it learning. And you're over here, and knowledge managers are over in the CIO shop, and they install portals. Well, that's wrong. Uh, the sweet spot of knowledge management is creating a learning organization. If you folks aren't involved in doing knowledge management, then the knowledge managers are missing a great resource. And you're missing a great opportunity. Because the future is moving more and more from just providing training, particularly face-to-face, -face, into all these dynamic things we're beginning to talk about. And most of those would more conventionally be called knowledge management initiatives.